give me a share in the revenue. I don't want a partnership. I don't want an ownership. You can't expect to hire someone and tell them, hey, this is my brief. Go and showcase my brand. I wanted to learn. I genuinely, I was not getting the education I needed from my university. And I say this to everyone, whether they're in sales or whether they're in content creation or whatever, I tell them that your probationary period is like a football match. Easier people to work with, more money, faster payments. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Let's do it. I could say today we're the biggest TikTok agency in the entire GCC. When I say that is we are the biggest in the sense of the accounts that we manage and we handle mm -hmm. and the size of those accounts that we handle and we manage. Mahdi, pleasure to have you here, buddy. Same here. Good to be here. <laughs> We're just talking about uh, Saudi there. You're yeah. saying it's really where the action is, right? Definitely, yeah. Tell us, tell us a bit more about that. Uh, easier people to work with, more money, faster payments. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Let's do it. I'm packing. I'm packing straight <laughs> after this. Straight I think you after should, this. I think, I think the next place you should be is Saudi. Is Saudi, yeah. yeah? definitely. Because it's blowing up. Why do you think that is? Because of the vision that they have for, for 2030, that's, that's right. the first one. And also, they just want to grow fast, big, and they're doing everything. And the population of Saudi is 10 times, I big. think, more than what UAE has mm. today. So more people, more businesses, more demand, and more money. So it's just, it's just Crazy. common sense. Crazy. You know, just as, as I was saying to you, you're not the first person that's told me this. And it seems like it spans across across industries. Every single industry, every single industry. I have friends who have shut down their um, chain of F&B outlets, shut down right. in the UAE, and they have all moved their headquarters to Saudi Arabia. And now they're just scattering all over the place. Really? Yeah. Is, is there a particular place in Riyadh Saudi? Is, or Riyadh, just I think Riyadh is, is number one. Is number one. And then you have Jeddah and the other countries. And right. then there's another place. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's I, don't, I don't remember the place, what it's called, but it's in the kind of deserted areas, you know. And um, don't know if you've seen these. The, have you seen the really big glass mirror kind of a thing in the middle of the desert? I don't know I, if you've I, seen I think stuff. it vaguely rings a bell. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Those places, I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. But there are a few places, but I think the main focus right. is Riyadh. Is Riyadh. Because I, I lived in Saudi oh. very briefly, years and years ago. <laughs> in, in my long and varied history, I used to be a teacher. Uh -huh. I used to teach English and uh -huh. I was in a place called Abha, okay. which, is, uh, which is up in the mountains, mm -hmm. nowhere near as developed as, uh, as Riyadh or any of these places. But even at that time, People there were talking about, you know, Vision 2030, Vision 2030. Now, all these years, I imagine there's been so much development. It's insane. But I'm curious, you know, tell us a bit more about your business, what it is that you guys cool, do. Oh yeah, so um, we are a 360 marketing media agency mm -hmm. focused around the youth. So I started when I was 24. Mm. Um, I wanted to do more in the agency that I was in. I've been selling all my life since I was 17. Right. Since I could get my hand on a, on a car and some different things here and there. I used to sell Ugg boots. Ugg boots, okay. On Dubizzle. Those, on uh, on yeah. Dubizzle, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, back that's, then, that's our gum tree in the UK. Literally. <laughs> back then, like nobody could, you know, but, like, you know the, Ugg didn't exist here. Right. So I was connected with a warehouse uh -huh. that sold them. Yeah. Off price. People would wear Ugg boots in, in, yeah, in Dubai, of though, There's in this 50 there, degree heat. In, in three months, I used to make so much money that enabled me to pay for tuition for college because I thought education is everything. Right. I thought. You thought, you thought. I was well, going to say. In my field, business, advertising, sales, management, yeah. you know? Um, and back then, I just wanted to get my degree because I thought- Because it's just what a you do, degree right? is everything, you get it. Right now, I don't know where it is. Um, <laughs> same, I haven't same. used it. I have never used it. So then I, I used to sell on Dubizil. Mm -hmm. I love the selling whole process behind how sales is done and how you get the customers. And if the customer is happy, the customer can grow 
And from the word of mouth, you can have five, ten, and it doubles. It just kind of grows that way. Um, so it worked really well. Went into uni college, started selling in uni. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what were just, you selling then? I was, I was actually, um, I was writing essays and projects for different people, <laughs> but I never wrote them. <laughs> Where were you when I needed <laughs> some, some exams done? Come on. I never wrote them. So what I used to do is I used to have two different websites that I was registered with right one used to give me access to every single essay and project all over the globe through a moodle system that right. kind of um got them all together yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. i used to take them right. i used to have a topic i used to like do what i shouldn't be doing but i did it and then i used to put <laughs> it in another software right which kind of paraphrased everything yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. what chat gpt I does was about today to tell you you'll you, so, you be raking it so in. what chat gpt does today i used to manually do right. i think about you could say 11 years ago got you and uh, just made money and made money and made money so i had my odd business mm -hmm. <laughs> on dubuzo and then i had this and then slowly when it both started working i didn't have enough time so I was making the money and I was paying other people to do the work with the model that I had. Right, right. So, so you, you were outsourcing this. I was outsourcing at a later stage, right? Because I Got didn't it. have time. Got uh, it. And then um, just time passed and I would, wanted to work in a corporate environment. I, I, I was like, listen, I'm making the money. Mm -hmm. I'm 20. Mm -hmm. I'm having enough money to live a good life, mm -hmm. you know? And I've, I've been on my own since I was 17. So my family wasn't here. Mm -hmm. I had to, you know, struggle. I didn't have a place to sleep in. I had friends, family, car here, there. Um, but then I wanted to experience the corporate world. I found an agency. Why, Why did you want to experience I it? wanted to learn. Just to wear a suit? Yeah, I'm, no, not a suit. I hated, <laughs> I, I didn't like wearing a suit. I didn't right. want to. I wanted to learn what the principles and the norms of business is got you because i was i came from the streets mm. i never knew nine to six or i didn't have a structure in my life that and formality. I, I wanted it right. i was just craving it you know mm -hmm. um so i tapped into that world um started working for an agency um advertising uh i started with a no salary just to work right uh, See, and that, that's rare to find nowadays uh, people people who would be happy to do that Difficult why, to why, find. Why did you do that for no money? I wanted to learn. I genuinely, I was not getting the education I needed from my university. And I was afraid that once I finished, then I have to start gaining experience to get into a corporate field. Mm. Because yes, I was making money, but it wasn't stable. So I wanted to have that stable thing because my mindset was that at the moment. But then I had to learn to get to it. Mm -hmm. So I was making my money. I was getting my education. Mm -hmm. But my classes was at night. So I had my day free. Right. And I didn't want to chill at university with the other students and kids, you know, sitting on a common area, smoking and, and you know, just like laughing about and Doing wasting time. Student stuff. I wanted to learn. So I went in, tapped into it. And about, I think, a year's time, I was top sales and just leading a sales team and just going on and on. Right. It took about four years. Um, I left to start my business twice. I failed. Um, and then every time I failed, I used to call back the company and I used to be like, can I come back? <laughs> and they never said no. They never said no. Because okay. I was making sales for them. You were making uh, the money. Yeah, they didn't trust me. They didn't trust me for shit. In, in, in what way? Like, they, they, every time I wanted to go back, they're like, what if you leave again? Right. What are okay. we going to do? We're going to like, you're going to bring all these projects. You're going to bring all these sales and then boom, it's going to go and <laughs> want to start your own. So one day um, I decided to, okay, fine. Listen, I will come instead of me leaving, I'll introduce this whole influencer management thing into, right. into the advertise because they were doing print publishing and it was dying. Mm -hmm. It was on a decline massively four mm -hmm. or five years ago. So I'm like, if you want to sustain and if you want to grow, let's introduce this. Mm -hmm. Give me a share in the revenue. I don't want a partnership. I don't want an ownership. Um, so he said, okay, no problem. Let's do it. Um, but I will only do it when you get the first deal in for this project. But then when I went back to my ex-boss, I told him, hey, listen, I got the money. This is the contract. Everything yeah. is done. Let's go. Hire a team. Get me equipment. Spend some money. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm sorry, I can't. For whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. So then I just decided, I'm like, listen, I'm out. Like, I'm not going to come build something for you when you're not even willing to invest, to invest. because my, my mentality is if you want to make money, you have to spend money. Right. You will not be able to make money. If you're greedy, you will, you have a limit. Right. And if you want to surpass that limit, you gotta be, you gotta make sacrifices. Mm. And if you don't mm. do that in any industry, in any way possible, it will just not Money work. needs to go back to fuel that fire. 
So he said no. And then I went to the same guy. I'm mm. like, listen, I've got the idea. Do you want a partner? He said, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so he gave me some money. He took a certain percentage in the company and I yeah. started. I started in 2018, TriFit Media. Right. I, I called it Shots Media at first, but then I couldn't get the name. So Why, why TriFit? I Googled it. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> we as, were, as you do, <laughs> we were influencer management, production, yeah. and clients. Right, we were three, Try. and at the time, we were also three partners. We mm -hmm. were um, my ex partner Tofik, his partner Yasser, and me. Mm -hmm. So I went on Google and I typed, "What are the synonyms of three? Mm -hmm. And the word popped up: trifid. Trifid. Actually, trifid. Right. Is a word that Not means even just try. Try fit. Tri fit. Tri fit means something that's equally split into three. Right. Okay. Um, so I named it. I'm like, whatever, you know, it works, it works. Yeah, Who came yeah. up with the name Apple? Like, what did they think <laughs> Apple is going to be Apple? I just wanted to leave because I needed more space to grow. I left and my driver borrowed me um, 45,000 dirhams. Right. And I'm like, how do, how do you have 45,000 dirhams? And so I don't have these it. These guys are raking it in. So he actually is the eldest of his family of 12 that all live here. Uh -huh. Cousins, in-laws, whatever. And then he, because he's the eldest, he collects all of their salaries at the end of the month <laughs> as a bank. The debt collector. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a bank, he keeps it. And then he's like, take it, I trust you. I'm like, great, okay, let's do it. We started and then it just started off from there. We went from one to 20 to 40 to 60. I think um, when COVID came, we shut down, um, depressed. I had to get a bigger place to grow um, and everything shut down. I had a 20,000 square feet facility, two floors. Um, and I'm like, what am I gonna do? Mm. As soon as COVID stopped and the lockdown was over and we had to go back to work, mm. I did one video on TikTok um, saying, I'm hiring every single person that there is in this country, if you're young, come here and join, I'll give you an opportunity. And literally overnight, the next day, open day, I had around 400 people at the facility. 400 people. My content went viral, everybody was there trying to have an opportunity and wanting to do something. So then I'm like, I'm sitting in my office, right? I'm starting to do interviews. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. I've been winging it all my life. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with all these people and then- I know the, <laughs> I know the feeling, yeah. I'm like, what am I gonna do? And then, I looked around, there were all these young people wearing like coats and suits and they're thinking this is like, this is, this is the media industry, you don't have yeah. to wear that, I don't it's care what you're wearing. Um, I went out and I took one of their CVs and I took a bin and I burnt it. Uh -huh. I burnt the CV and I still have the video and I put that in, in the bin uh -huh. and, I, and I didn't yell, I just was loud. I was like, guys, I don't care about your past. Mm -hmm. If you think you're capable and you wanna continue, you're more than welcome. I don't need to see your CVs. I don't need to interview. Your future work that's will show for itself. That's an interesting, uh, I might have to take notes there. <laughs> Bring a bin and a, and a, and a lighter. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't, it wasn't very, um, uh, I don't know what the right word conventional. is. Conventional. Uh, conventional to yeah. do. But it worked. It works. Um, and then we just grew. Um, obviously a lot came and a lot went. Today after five years, we've had over 5,000 people that have worked at the company right. on and off. Mm -hmm. The peak was at 350. But then um, I, I failed again. I've, I made so much money mm -hmm. and I invested into a garage. Mm -hmm. I invested into a supermarket. I invested into a bakery. Into a supermarket. I opened a supermarket, a right. two floor store supermarket right. that I wanted to, to be a media supermarket, which failed. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even gonna go in and ask. Uh, that's not. <laughs> and so everything failed and then I dropped down from about 350 to today we're at 70 people. Right. Um, but we're very, we're much more focused. Mm. I could say today we're the biggest TikTok agency in the entire GCC. And when I say that is we are the biggest in the sense of the accounts that we manage and we handle mm -hmm. and the size of those accounts that we handle and we manage. Right. They're global accounts. One of them is Power Horse. Um, there are some that I can't name and I can't mention because mm -hmm. of the NDAs I have with them, but there are very, very big key accounts that we take care of, we create content for, we manage. Right. Uh, we manage and handle some of the biggest influencers in the region. So we're focused and we're growing slowly, I could say. Mm. And my next move and target is to do the same uh, kind of, you could say, model of supporting the youth. I'll always believe in it. Like I will always believe, I never know in five years what app is gonna pop up, which AI is gonna pop up that's gonna change the world. And I need to make sure that 
we are there with that crowd growing mm -hmm. and it's not going to be a 35 year old launching it it's going to be a 17 18 year old that someone who's still in the know who understands the current kind of yeah, environment because yeah. things ain't changed so quickly especially in, in, in social media if i tell you that, that do you know about discord if i've heard of it yeah i've never used it personally. oh my god it's the most complicated thing ever right. to communicate on right i Cannot figure it out. Right. But is, all is it like these, a forum kind of... It's everything. It's, it's WhatsApp, Telegram, Instagram. It's everything into one. Sounds like WeChat. Have you heard of WeChat? It's, it's like WeChat. Right. Very similar to WeChat, but right. a bit more futuristic, I Got could you. say. Got you. And any 16-year-old today will know how to use it. Any 16-year-old will know how to use the Discord. Dis I, I had the impression that Discord, uh, Discord is more of a kind of techie, you know, niche groups. Not but anymore. It sounds like, it, you know, it's, it's developing. It's, cool. it's developing. Right. So um, I want to be the person that finds the next 19-year-old in the next three years mm -hmm. who understands all of this, mm. who can come to me with an idea, mm. and I'll be like, I'll support you. Mm. Maybe not just financially, maybe with a bit more of a mentorship, maybe teach them, maybe give them a space to work in, maybe support them in the ways that other people might not, um, in both the Web 2 space and the Web 3 space, because both are developing as we go. How, how are you guys tapping into that Web 3.0? We are already there. So we have already tried tapping into it, mm. um, but obviously it's a very um, up and down market, you know? You have the bull market, the bear market, you have ups and downs, but it's developing, it's going. Mm. Obviously, when it's a bull market, everybody's talking about it because there's a hype. Mm -hmm. Right now, not so much really around it because it's, a, it's, 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 a it's coming yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. But w whatever goes down always must come back up, right? Yep. So I'm, I'm now like trying to figure out, okay, when it goes back up, I want to be on top. <laughs> that's, the whole, that's the whole point. But we are, we are trying to, to tap into as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the vision of TriFit and the vision of me is no matter where I am, what I'm doing, as long as I'm in the media space, mm. to always support the youth. Right. And there are cons. They're a headache to work with. You know, they're, they're irresponsible. <laughs> they're unreliable. <laughs> Love but, that. But with every bad comes good. And yeah, I think yeah, the yeah. good sometimes could be worth so much more than the bad. And if there's someone that can glue these. And harness that. Together. How, how do you manage working with, I don't want to kind of label mm. all young people, but Gen, Gen Zs, right? How, how do you manage people like that? Um, I have to adapt to them. I have to laugh with them. I have right. to crack jokes that they would like. Right. Um, you know, um, there's- So you need to know about your Fortnites and all this stuff, huh? That also, but also there's a saying, they go like, um, you can always make someone that's young happy with a box of pizza and a bottle of JD. <laughs> you know, like, for me, it's like- <laughs> JD, they, I like they, that. They would like that way more <laughs> than a paycheck of 15 grand. Yeah? Because they don't, you know what I've realized? What? They don't know how to spend it. Right. They don't have management over their money. Right. And they're young. They want to have a good time. Yeah. Now, not that they shouldn't get paid. Yes, they should. Of course, everyone should get paid. But I've noticed, and this is from conversations sometimes I have with the young people that work, is like, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want a 20 grand paycheck today? Mm -hmm. Do you want this much salary? He's like, no, bro. I'm like, what do you want? He's like, what's the party this weekend? Okay. Where should I, so, you know, like, because that's what they want, that's right? What they're, they want. they're breaking out of this, of this kind of um, reality that they have in the digital world, wanting to come into the, um, into the real life world. And, right. and they need someone to go to and have a conversation and chat with. And, Interesting. And, you know, it's so you think, because my, my impression of kind of that really young generation is that, you know, they, they're not really interested in the kind of experiences. It's more about, you know, let me, let me stick my headphones on. Let me go into and play Fortnite. Let me go into this metaverse or whatever it is. People w still want to go out. They like still want to. There are twenty year olds today making right. more money than me, you, and a hundred other people combined. So <laughs> for them, they could go on and make money on whatever. Doesn't mean online. anything to them. It's okay, great money. Now what? What's next? Right. You know what can I have? I want that that good time, that good yeah, energy, yeah, yeah. that good environment, people that can understand me, people that I can sit and share stories with, because it doesn't exist with that generation mm. as much as it does with ours or people that are even older than us. Um, so I think from that angle, I've learned a lot and I've learned how to adapt to them. Mm. And TikTok for me is a way of getting to these people. 
A hundred percent, definitely. I do. A, I do one video on TikTok saying I'm. So I have a thing on TikTok where I start to say I'm hiring everyone in this country. Right now, not necessarily do I end up hiring everyone because I'm not. I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm not a like you know. I'm not a superhero or anything. Yeah, yeah. But I am giving an opportunity to the people that really want it. Yeah. So. I get thousands of applicants and I end up bringing in 30 to 50 people in. And out of those 30 to 50 people, after being vetted in interviews and interviews and et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. 10 of them stay. Now, not because I get rid of them or I fire them. No, mm-hmm. they stay because they might not like the environment. So we're very, we're very flexible in that sense. And then the people that get to choose to stay, we'll offer them the visas and the and the documents and we'll we'll have them you all know all that good stuff all that good stuff yeah. but it takes a 3 months period and i say this to everyone whether they're in sales or whether they're in content creation or whatever i tell them that your probationary period is like a football match football match is 90 minutes consider that being 90 days mm. the decision can change in minute 89 you never know if you don't achieve anything from minute 1 to 89 Maybe you'll score a goal on minute eight and then yeah, you yeah, win yeah. the game and that's it. That's an interesting perspective. And it's, it's funny because it sounds like you're still very open-minded. If oh. someone's not been perhaps performing that well for 89 minutes, that last minute for you is still, is still worth something. Definitely, 100%. Okay. I believe in struggles because I've been through struggles. Mm. And maybe that's wrong, maybe that's right. It's okay. Some people have different perceptions. Some people don't. I believe and you need to work hard, work long and work smart all at the same time. Some people say, no, don't work hard or long, work smart. Maybe you'll save that thing. Uh, why not do all? Work smart, work hard, work long. That kind of smoothly leads me on to my kind of last yeah. question, which is, what do you think it takes to be as successful as you are with Trifid Media? Patience and sacrifice. If I didn't have the patience um, on those nights where I had to pay a lot of money in the next two days, and I and I didn't have the patience and sacrifices on to struggling to know that it will come and I have to work hard in the last minute to get it, just don't give up. I've wanted to give up so many times. Mm. And um, my mom actually always tells me, she's like, think about it this way. You'll be as thin as a strand of hair, but you're never going to break. And it just keeps me going, you know. It's, all, it's, it's been the case. There's nothing else I could say. Um, keep in mind that you need to make sure as a business owner, people want to buy off of you, not because you have the best brand in the world. People want to buy off of you. Best example is Elon Musk. If Elon Musk wasn't the face of Tesla, do you think Tesla would be where it is today? Not. So take that concept and just replicate it with your business. And all you have to do is be in front of your brand. Talk about your brand because no one's going to know your brand better than you. You can't expect to hire someone and tell them, hey, this is my brief, go and showcase my brand. Maybe you can do it with brands that have been there for years and years and years brands that have been there for plus 25 years mm. but if you're new today into the market then you want to you need re- to show you, you have yourself. to show so be that keep up with the trends you can do a trend that's up and running not the way you don't have to go and dance in front of the camera but you can go and have a chat with mm. the music in the background why not because that's a trend sure. so if you put all these together be patient and sacrifice and still work long and hard because there's a lot of the mentality today is why work long and hard for our know? work week for our work. No, why? Why not? Why, why can't you divide your days into three? Wake up at five, five to 11 is one day, 11 to five is another day, and five to nine is another day. And think about it that way. And if you're, if you, but a lot of people don't want to do that. Just don't want to do that. Why? Because they're comfortable mm. with a certain amount of income and a life that they have. And it's okay. See, there's a thing that Gary Vee says, and he's my mentor. I look up to him. He says, it's okay. There are people that are happy with a, hundred thousand dollar paycheck annually it's fine there are people like that but there are also people that get that and complain about the people that are making millions and millions don't complain don't complain be happy with what you have good but why do you have to complain about the others (laughs) especially if you're not putting in that work especially if you're not getting up at five not everyone has to get up at five but at least putting in that level of effort right and i think a lot of people are realizing the kind of the latter thing that you said in terms of brand and kind of bringing your personality into it with personal branding how important i know you kind of touched on it there but how important is personal branding nowadays for 
for business. It's since you build off of yourself mm. and then you sell after you have a fan base or a follower base or some people. So if I build a follower base of 100,000 people, usually 1% to 5% are there people that will be influenced by my... 1% um, to 5%. 1 to 5% is usually, unless you are really loved and that it's just, it's, it's, a, bit it's, it's a bit higher. Got you. So if I want to build that, per, if I build that personal brand, it will reflect onto my actual brand, which will make me money. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing what I'm doing on my social media platforms mm -hmm. to be an influencer. So tomorrow I can charge a brand. Mm -hmm. to I'm doing it because... One of the things I could tell you is I don't have to pay an HR outsourced company to re for recruitments for my company. Right. I create one TikTok video and then and you're good to I go. can give the HR company a, a few hundred <laughs> CVs as well. I don't mind, right? So You can help them yeah, out. I don't mind. So, but I've t it's taken me years to develop that base. So when I put out a piece of content, it goes viral and gets half a million reach. Sure. And that adds value to my company because sure. I'm saving X amount of dirhams a year in recruitment that I have to outsource and pay out. Sure. Whatever, one of the ways. Mahdi, thanks for making it down. We'll definitely need to uh, do a part two. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Pleasure. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you liked it, leave a like, share, comment, subscribe, leave a good review, good rating. And if there is someone else that you'd like me to have a chat with, let me know in the comment section. Again, don't forget to share this. That's how we're going to get the word out there. That's how we're going to build a community around what we're doing here. Follow us on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, all kind of major platforms. And we'll be releasing every week. So stay tuned.